My name is Annie Bustos. I'm the Director of Marketing for TechBlock. I'm joined today by Prashant Kumar, who's our VP of Solutions and Strategy. And today we're going to present to you um, our sort of point of view on why and how to create a mobile first web strategy. Hello everybody, this is Prashant. I hope you're having a fantastic day so, so far. And hopefully you have a great session going forward as well. So in as a high level sort of skeleton for today's agenda, uh, we're going to go over an introduction um, as well as sort of walk you through the differences between being mobile first versus mobile responsive. Um, there is a difference in the approach and not everyone is always aware of it. Um, we'll provide you sort of our thoughts on why it is more beneficial for companies and organizations to adopt a mobile first approach. Um, some considerations as well as a sort of guideline slash checklist of how you could actually bring this to fruition for your organization. So without further ado, uh, Prashant, if you want to set up the intro. Yeah, um, you know, the agenda is basically set up to help um, uh, all sorts of businesses, SMBs um, and enterprises. Usually enterprises are much more mature in these approaches, but uh, we feel that um, middle-tier businesses and SMBs can uh, specifically generate help from developing an effective mobile strategy um, because um, they spend the money wisely and there's not a lot of money there to be spent to um, create um, a huge mobile strategy for themselves. So um, this session is more geared towards uh, mid-tier businesses and SMBs, but enterprises can leverage the same knowledge um, uh, uh, and, and use that for uh, their mobile first um, strategy. And I will come to defining what mobile first is, so bear with us for a few more moments. Um, however, before we go into uh, the different linguals of mobile first, responsive, and what, or what all these things mean, I always like to start by saying, why are we even talking about this? What is the business driver? And as you can see on my screen currently, there is a bunch of numbers and statistics all pointing to the fact that how important is mobile um, to the business. So much so that we are we put a bold statement down saying that if you are not mobile, if your business is not mobile friendly, uh, you are as good as uh, not being in business. If not today, maybe very soon. So um, if that is so important, a lot of people are saying, thinking, is it around us? And I always say, forget about statistics. You can see something if it is so important around you or in your daily life. Uh, the importance of mobility can be seen in your homes, at your workplace, in the, in the shopping mall, everywhere. So if you are at home and look at it from operational perspective, organizations like cable companies or internet providers, if you're in Canada, like Bell and Rogers, and they, when they send a technician, they usually walk in with a mobile phone, Android, or iPhone, and they uh, they use that to troubleshoot your problems. If they are, you have a connection problem, if your internet connection problem or cable is down, and they, uh, in a live way, interact with their systems, which allows them to troubleshoot the system, report the bugs, and uh, fix it. Um, and even the guy who delivers the courier today, you can uh, have real-time sign-in capabilities on their mobile devices. They don't go back to their truck and then enter the information. Now they do it on the, on, on the um, on the doorstep with you. Um, same things are happening when you go to e-commerce experiences, right? Um, how many of us uh, want to, um, even if we don't buy online, eventually don't pull the trigger online, we do the comparative shopping online, right? How many times are we getting influenced by these that we see on the emails and how much of the information today we access on the mobile devices uh, versus the desktop devices? So the nature of consumer, look around around you, you see the 16-year-old, 18-year-olds, and even the younger and the older kids, they're always on the mobile phone. They're much more savvy audiences, mobile savvy audiences. That is the kind of audience we are catering to. We have to be extremely cognizant of the kind of experiences our businesses um, are creating and are they good enough um, to entice the consumers or the consumer segments and their behavioral habits Today, because that's going to have a direct impact on the business today and tomorrow. And that leads us to, um, to the kind of um, mobile solutions that exist um, that will allow your businesses to create different kind of mobile applications, right? 
Um, and as soon as you have built a mobile strategy, which we'll, we'll come to in a minute, by the way, which is more important um, and more important first step than actually deciding which mobile platform. But just to educate you about what these various terms mean for those people who are not aware of it, but there are a lot of people who are already aware of it. Um, it's important that we understand that there are three primarily categories of mobile uh, applications websites, right? So um, native applications are something similar to what um, basically only work on those devices. These applications you can bought buy in the respective app stores. So if you have an iOS device or an iPhone, you have that those apps that you go and buy on um, Apple Store. If you are on Android, you go and buy it on, app, on Google Play Store. Similarly, um, Microsoft has their own store on for Windows phones. They, these applications work on their, those platforms and their respective devices only. However, they do leverage some of the best capabilities of the devices uh, and provide a very rich user experience. Um, uh, obviously, not just by being native, it does not guarantee that you'll have rich user experience. You need a lot more. But it provides you um, the capability to leverage some of the best features that devices come with. And, um, and and the people why they love those devices and then leverage those features and be able to uh, provide a rich experience for your users. So they are again tied to the platforms. Uh, now on the other side we have web applications. These are applications that run typically in browsers and they have a cross-platform appeal. So what it allows businesses uh, like yours to do is to build one application and then leverage it across platforms. So you can build an application. If you build it the right way, it will work similarly or almost the same way in an Android, on an iPhone, on, an, on a Windows phone. Um, they can have a look and feel of native app, but they are not a native app. And the performance is always uh, is pretty good, can be pretty good, but it is never going to be able to match some of the best made native applications. Um, in order to meet the best of the both worlds in terms of being able to have the best possible user experience and also cross-platform um, appeal so that your investments are in, a con are in control, um, you don't have to spend so much money building the same uh, applications in three different platforms or two different platforms. Um, you can build something like hybrid applications. Hybrid applications are uh, like applications like um, PhoneGap, Xamarin, um, Sensha Touch, stuff like that, Titanium. Those are the kinds of applications which allow you to build once and then deploy it to multiple platforms and applications. And then um, it uses leverage is best of both worlds. So it gives you the different types of applications just to educate you for business users who are not aware of it, what are the different kinds of applications that exist. However, the agenda of this con of this call was primarily to work around creating effective mobile strategy. And this is where organizations have to start thinking about the moment they understand that they need mobile, um, they need to go mobile as a business, um, they have to make some important decisions regarding their mobile strategy. And one of them is whether you want to go mobile first or mobile responsive. And before we dwell into or dive deep into it, you're thinking what, what each one of these mean. Um, so I'll just take two minutes to walk you through what each one of these design philosophies mean. Uh, mobile first is primarily based, uh, it's not just a design methodology, it's an approach. It's the way you think about your business and how you're going to cater to your audience. Um, when you go with mobile first, you basically first think about mobile users or mobile stakeholders. Whether you're building applications for operations or you're building an e-commerce application or a shopping cart, you first think about your mobile users. And what are the five things or four things that they will do first? Because mobile users are not used to having a desktop view. It's a different view, right? It's a different... Um, you have to make stronger decisions, and it has usually should be backed by data. And we'll come to that, speak about that a little bit later in the presentation as well. What are the most important functions that they do 80% of the time? And it's usually 20% of the functions that are used 80% of the time by mobile users who are on the fly. And that takes much higher precedence. 
and you will have to make stronger decisions about cutting out features or functionality that is not necessary. So in a mobile first approach, you pay your entire attention to those use cases which are relevant to a mobile user. And around those use cases, you build experiences for mobile users. And then it, you basically expand from that into a larger form factor like tablets or desktop and continue to add functionality based on priorities and use cases, um, obviously backed by data, uh, evidence, and then basically include those functionality and features into those um, additional form factors. Um, as we go along. While on the other hand, responsive web design is all about designing with the all-in approach. We want to know all the things we want out of a website or an application, and then we basically design it for desktop, but with a design pattern in mind, which will allow it to have a grid fashion. So as you render the same application, same website on a, on a, on a uh, slate or on a iPad, um, you will see that easily uh, conform to that form factor. And if you go further onto the mobile device, it further conforms. But the content is the same. While on the mobile first design, the content is different from the amount of content you can access in different devices and form factors is totally different from the one that you will be able to access in responsive web design. But the content is still the same, and you have to go. Sometimes it becomes annoying because you have a lot of content in desktop, which is easily accessible on desktop, but as you go on a mobile phone, it has to continue to scroll, scroll, scroll. So, you know, although it is much better than not having a non-mobile, uh, not having a mobile device, but it still uh, is not the most, um, uh, I would say, optimized mobile first design. So mobile first web design approach always gives you the best possible experience for your end users. Um, that easily leads me, uh, by now you already know, of uh, most of the benefits, but I'll go through it quickly for you. So as I was speaking, content is different, right? And you get the best return of investment because you perform the, provide the best possible experience for your users. But it also forces you, right, uh, to do, uh, perform the best possible information architecture because the landscape is so small, you are asked to make very Top choices because that has direct impact on your performance. If you continue to load a ton of information on one screen on such small factor, you remember people are on, on or on the fly. Sometimes internet connectivity is not there. Whether they need online access, offline access, what they will synchronize, how much time does it take to load the application? So you have to make some strong choices. And the information architecture is also governed by the fact the way people operate on a desktop, leveraging a keyboard and a mouse. It's totally different from the way we access a mobile phone or iPad using our thumb and one, one so uh, uh, in the palm of your hand. And that really has a huge impact on the um, kind of design we normally uh, have in a mobile first approach. Uh, so it fills in the performance gap, and you know, these kind of decisions allow you to um, also think about performance. Um, the strategic capabilities, some things you should be thinking about. How are you going to leverage this mobile app for strategically into your entire mobile portfolio? And not always should you have to have to choose between a mobile app or a mobile website. So a lot of organizations have both. So um, what you will have in a mobile app versus what you will have in a mobile website, um, uh, and which is geared to what, what kind of audiences, what kind of stakeholders, do you know what your stakeholders want, do you have enough data, all these kind of things. And you are seeing this omni-channel uh, experiences grow, and in fact, we are in the era where we are talking about it. And if you go to TechBox website, you will see some interesting webinars around this topic as well. Um, how is omni-channel experiences morphing itself for the clients of the future, for the consumer of the future? And how even aisles are going to become virtual aisles? And uh, the virtual experience is going to merge with the real brick and mortar experience. And those are the things that uh, retailers are already bringing those kind of changes into today's experiences, um, and mobile is the prime driver around those. So um, one of the, why are they doing that though? Why, why is that so important? It's not just a fashion statement. It's not just because people are on the mobile, so we are trying to reach out on the mobile. Mobile allows you to 
have the data that marketers and businesses never had before. The kind of segmentation you can today perform by collecting data from people's mobile phones in terms of their gender, in terms of their age group, in terms of their preferences, what kind of applications they use, how much time do they spend on it. That kind of data gives you so much intelligence that you can leverage that data to basically um, provide phenomenal experiences, target um, the right kind of audiences, provide personalization um, on your applications and websites. So um, uh, a lot of businesses are leveraging that to provide a fantastic experience and th that is resulting in a customer that feels empowered, is connected, is always having a dialogue with the, their favorite brands and hence the brand loyalty. So um, having said that, it's, it is um, so, sometimes it looks easier than it is, but other times glass half full, half empty. It is, uh, if you don't do it appropriately, uh, then you experience some um, strong challenges. And believe me, trust me when we say that as a consulting company, more often than not, VC organizations having gone uh, and they think they're just going to build a mobile website and, or a mobile application and they, uh, they come back with more sets of challenges than uh, accomplishments. And why is that? So some of the challenges based on our experiences working with businesses, we feel that is all at the beginning. You have to start the right way and, uh, and keep your eye on the ball all the time. So always start with business users um, and data. Like what are their requirements? Uh, what are the experiences that should drive the business users? What are the KPIs? What are, you, what are the key performance indicators from business that you want to keep an eye on when you go with a mobile strategy so that when you're, uh, you can um, actually see those KPIs perform well or not so well and so that you can continue to fine tune your mobile strategy as you go along um, in an iterative fashion. Uh, please remember that when you go to your stakeholders, when you ask them questions, what features they want, everybody wants everything, but when you see data, what they feature, what are the features they usually use, it's usually much a much smaller subset. As I said, 20% of the features being used in the design. So um, you have to decide on your ROI and then basically ensure the functionality expectations are in line and backed by data uh, rather, than, um, the, rather than the gut fields. Um, uh, again, and that leads into balancing user needs versus wants. Um, and these kind of decisions have to be made at the beginning or in an iterative manner and continue to um, build on that. Uh, remember, as we talked about, um, there are lots, lots of constraints of being in a small device and form factor that uh, lends itself to some design and development challenges. You use experience challenges. Make sure you build prototypes in small, in small chunks. Make sure you feel it even before you go into building it and commit to it. So our methodology, especially at TechBlock, we talk about building prototypes in an agile manner. We build user experiences so that people can actually start playing with it on mobile devices without it actually having coded the line. So, uh, and the feedback comes uh, directly from the end users. So we kind of ensure that our point of uh, failure is um, uh, is as the chances of failure are as minimal as possible. Um, always remember that your choices will have direct impact on ongoing maintenance costs, ongoing operational costs. Uh, how do you want to continue to enhance your application, especially if you're building it in iterative fashion? Uh, are you going to have it on multiple devices? If you're going to have native, you have to make simultaneous releases of features and functionality to all possible platforms because you want to give them um, a cohesive experience across platforms. Um, so all those kind of uh, things come into the picture, um, and of course, universal compatibility. How as you're designing it, whether you're designing it native or you're designing it as a hybrid platform or web, you have to think about providing a uniform experience across platforms and devices for people um, uh, to be able to easily adopt these systems. So, um, and here, this is where I believe that Annie will come in and help you figure out the various approaches, how to take it to the next level, and some of the good steps. Um, good, easy way of uh, getting into your mobile strategy and mobile initiatives. Thanks for that, Prashad. Um, so we covered this briefly a little bit earlier, where we talked about uh, the two different approaches when creating a mobile strategy. 
Um, so mobile responsive companies are typically follow the graceful degradation um, process, whereas companies that are mobile first more so follow the progressive enhancement. So these are two different approaches, and one of the questions that we often get is whether we follow graceful degradation or progressive enhancement, won't we end up at the same thing? Um, and the answer is maybe. Uh, there is a possibility that you may end up with the same set of features and functionality within both sets, but there's also, the op there's also the chance that you may not. So the question becomes, if we do not have the same features and functionalities, whether we designed it from taking on a degradation approach versus an enhancement approach, what's the risk? Um, and the risk really is that customers have a certain expectation when they engage in your brand. Um, they have a certain set of standards and they hold you to that. So if you're applying a degradation value, a degradation model when designing your approach, the question becomes, can you guarantee that you're delivering the best customer experience at every step of, sort of every step of the way? Um, customers today are definitely much more volatile. Um, there is not a lot of brand loyalty. They are better informed, more connected, uh, and potentially they could be great influencers of your brand. So with that, I mean, companies are definitely fighting harder every day for not only increased market share, but also to increase the share of wallet. So if you're stripping features and functionality, um, you just need to be aware that every step of the engagement process is definitely crucial. Um, and it only takes really a single, a single core engagement to start sort of this negative ripple effect. So when you're starting a mobile, starting to make your organization mobile first, um, the one, one thing I sort of want to reiterate and make sure that everyone's all aware of is it definitely starts with the business. So it starts with your understanding of your customers, what your understanding of how to deliver the best customer experience, um, understanding of the business, the business strategy, as well as technology. Um, so things that the business is going to want to consider is, um, I mean, what are you even trying to accomplish or enhance uh, with your mobile site or mobile application, and how that will differentiate and differ itself from the desktop version. Um, it's not just about mobility, it's not just about um, the ease of use or being able to carry mobile devices, it's also what could be done better and faster um, using mobile versus a desktop version. Um, so from that, you then need to sort of choose your right vehicle. So we talked about, um, we talked about web, we talked about mobile, and we talked about hybrid approach. So it isn't always as simple as, you know, if you want to deliver content, you take a website. If you want to deliver functionality, you take an application. There's always a room and space for both of them within your strategy. Um, and you really need to determine how those will flow together. If you're making changes on the mobile website, mobile responsive website, how is that going to affect, affect and impact your mobile application and vice versa? Um, and then depending on which two or the hybrid approach that you take, then you sort of need to take it one step further to determine how is that going to impact your, uh, your SEO. It, is your application going to compete with your website? How are you going to create messaging? How will you change messaging? Um, if there's an update that you make on the application, how do you sort of guarantee and ensure that that will follow through and be reflected on your website as well? So it's definitely more, it goes above and beyond than just choosing the right vehicle. It, al it also needs to take into consideration how each of those vehicles will interact with each other. Once you have sort of decided what, how and what your approach is going to be, um, there's different type of mo revenue models that you need to consider. So will you be, if you decide to go with the mobile application route, um, will you be charging users for the, for the download? Um, or is the app itself to be sort of driving e-commerce, driving purchases? 
Um, or, or any in this case also in terms of operational strategy because a lot of people don't build mobile applications for uh, just uh, for end consumers, sometimes it's for operational uh, practices. Uh, how much time are you saving on the floor, let's say on the factory floor or on the manufacturing floor or for certain operational tasks? Does it take something that took 20 minutes now, only five minutes? Um, and that allows for those kind of efficiencies. So there are different kind of KPIs and ROIs that you should be able to measure even for 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 uh, your mobile applications, especially the ones that are not built explicitly around generating revenue, but saving time and money. Exactly, and sort of only after that exercise has been completed, um, can you really start to design the optimal experience? So the optimal experience can be either for internal stakeholders or external stakeholders. Um, and it really is a balance of both the art and the science. Not only, for example, if it is a e-commerce site, not only do you want it to have a friendly and uh, good looking appeal to it, but you also want it to be efficient and make sure that it's driving the, the maximum result. I, I, I find, Annie, that the, the, the fact that you just mentioned that you have to balance the art and the science is, is a fantastic statement because uh, it's very easily said that, oh, design the best possible user experience. And you cannot appreciate this statement more because it is so hard to do that, especially in a larger enterprise in the more complicated environments. When you build applications which especially integrate with multi multitude of different back office applications, and they have their own limitations and experiences, right? Absolutely. Uh, and those kind of challenges, especially when you start integrating with your back office, like it can be CRM, it can be billing system, it can be your analytic system, it can be many other things. There are other challenges that start creeping into your uh, mobile uh, strategy or mobile solution roadmap. Those are the kind of things that you need to keep in mind, especially because they are going to uh, be something that you should have a strategy for and move well in advance and going to impact your go-to market in, in the impact your cost in terms of being able to provide the uh, best possible mobile experience for the different um, features that you plan to have. And that's also a great segue um, in sort of talking about my next section, which is when you're actually in the development and the build phase. Um, we always recommend that you sort of start small, start with the core, um, and you can add additional features and functionality as things come up. So one, one example of an enhancement that you might want to do along the road is um, personalization tactics. Um, there's different things that you could do in terms of personalizing the experience to particular users based on previous engagements. And it, this is awesome, right, because we see everybody, especially the retailers, taking huge advantage of personalization, right? The moment you load an app, the first thing the app asks you is, do you allow me to uh, allow the app to tell you where you are? Because they are trying to provide you the best possible information or best possible experience based, based, based on your location. Um, uh, if, you, if you are, let's say, in a movie uh, app, they tell you the movie tickets, promotions, stuff that is close to you. Mm -hmm. If you're in a traveling app, the same thing. Uh, airlines apps give you the same promotions and codes depending upon where you are and these kind of promotions come to you. So if these are the kind of experiences that other retailers and other businesses are doing. They might be, uh, you know, we were just working recently with a job site. For them, it was huge that they needed to know where you are because they could show the, all the jobs close to where you are and show the walking route and the heat map in the areas where the most jobs are and the salary map. It's phenomenal, the amount of experience, the amount of data you can collect just based on the location. Uh, and there are so many such factors and uh, that you can, uh, other data points that you can collect from mobile devices that we encourage businesses to leverage while in their mobile strategy. Absolutely. I, I mean, unfortunately, one of the biggest challenges that we do see with that, though, is that um, um, it definitely needs to be a compromise between business and IT. So, for example, if there's a third-party add-on that uh, business wants, IT may or may not be able to use that uh, based on whether or not there's additional plugins that are required on mobile devices, um, how, or even looking at how that might integrate with other systems. So, it's sort of about doing a balancing act between what, if you're, what your desired features are versus what IT could deliver is also a challenge that you might come up against. Um, 
more for, more importantly, sort of once everything is built and fed and it's tested, um, it's always sort of good best practice to go back to make sure that uh, the business the business need and the requirements that were initially set out for this project have been adequately met. And, and, and that's, again, we going back to the KPIs. We keep harping on business KPIs because that's your true North Star uh, in terms of your ROI, where you're saving money, where you're making money. Uh, those are met or not, and continue to um, monitor against those KPIs and fine tune your mobile application and strategy along those lines. Coming back to that, though, and uh, you talked briefly about uh, quality assurance and testing, and one of the things I always like to say to business um, users is that, especially in mobile, your quality assurance efforts should be larger than traditional web applications because web is much more standardized platform or has been, right? And usually what works at one usually works in some other platforms. Most of the time it holds true. But in a lot of mobile application strategies, because of the difference in platforms and form factors, and there's so many advent of new, uh, you know, um, devices and functionalities, if you are leveraging all these new functionalities and building native applications or hybrid applications, you have to test across all the devices and features. So there is larger effort in quality assurance. And we recommend that businesses don't shortchange uh, your effort to save money because it will impact your, the quality of product that is out there. And we strongly advise that you um, bring in quality uh, assurance right at the beginning of, uh, in the early stages of your mobile um, so for anyone that's listening on the line that is actually interested in developing a mobile strategy, um, we definitely recommend that you reach out to TechBlocks and get a free assessment. Uh, the URL on the, on the page in front of you will take you to a landing page where you can submit your information and one of our senior solution designers will get back to you. Um, during this engagement with TechBlocks, um, we'll come in, we'll, under, we'll sort of help you bridge that gap between business and IT, understanding what, what you're looking to accomplish. Um, we'll provide some recommendations on which approach or which event, I guess, delivery model you want to take. Um, we'll help you, we could build uh, small prototypes, applications, help you lay out what your application portfolio should be, how those should interact with each other and how they're gonna engage with each other. Um, as I mentioned, this is a free assessment. Um, there's definitely no commitment. So once we've gone through this exercise and you have a little bit um, a guideline and sort of a roadmap of what you need to do, um, you're free to take this on. And if you wanted to deploy it um, internally, in-house, you're free to do that. If you wanted to work with a different partner of your own choice, you're free to do that. Um, or if you're happy with TechWalks, I mean, we're definitely more than happy to um, provide you the rest of the services. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Um, we will now be taking questions. Um, our information is provided on the screen above. Uh, so if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at any time.